Good day to you one and all, it is I, Justin Hawkins, and this is Justin Hawkins Rides Again, my YouTube channel. Um, today I'm doing like a, an album that's a top to bottom bangers in my view. Um, all the songs are written, weirdly, by um, Paul Williams, who, uh, I don't know if you guys uh, remember Paul Williams, he was um, he played Little Enos in um, Smokey and the Bandit. Anyway, Paul Williams wrote all the songs for a, a, a musical called The Phantom of the Paradise, which... Um, I recently discovered, and I've been watching it religiously, I, I have a pathological hatred for um, musicals. I just, I'm not a fan of the art form. I don't know, that kind of musical theatre is just one slice of ham too many for me, if you know what I mean. Um, but on this occasion, I adore the movie, and I think it's really a classic, and it's, it's one of those forgotten classics. It was only sort of um, considered worth watching in, in two places, apparently. Winnipeg. In Canada and Paris, which is uh, a cultural um, hotbed, of course. So, um, anyway, it was uh, directed by Brian De Palma. It's an absolutely staggering piece of cinema, and uh, I really love the movie and I love all the songs. So, I'm going to talk about the soundtrack to Phantom of the Paradise, and I hope you enjoy it. Justin Hawkins writes again, again. So that movie starts off with like um, the image, uh, a posterized image of a, of a dead bird, which relates to a fictional re record company that's run by the character played by Paul Williams. I'm not going to do any spoilers. I don't want to ruin the, the tale for you because it is more or less an interpretation of Faust, which loses its way and gets really confusing towards the end and is brilliant. 20th Century Fox presents Phantom of the Paradise, a gothic horror story. <laughs> What was that? Love. A beautiful love story. Love, like a, a cinematic odyssey through the rock universe. From Greece to glitter wow. and beyond. But the first thing you see musically is um, a performance by uh, the sort of fictional band of the musical, which is called the Juicy Fruits. And they're all sort of dressed up like slicked back hair, quiffs, like greaseball tough guys from that particular period of the 70s when, you know, nostalgic 50s rock was, was prevalent. And the song is um, Goodbye, Eddie, Goodbye. I'm going to put my headphones on because it's just so good. I want to listen to it. <laughs> have I got a hat here? Yes, I have. Hang on a second. I don't know how to put the hat on top of the... Headphones, that's it. See? Sorted. We'll remember you forever, Eddie. We'll remember you forever, Eddie. Through the sacrifice you made, we can't believe the price you paid for love. So it's talking about Little Eddie Mitty, born in Jersey City, started singing when he was five. Um, never knew his father, mother didn't bother to catch his last name. Fast as he came, he was often flying, times were really trying. Eddie and his mother alone, soon another mister, sooner baby sister. Mother kept swinging and Eddie kept singing. Oh, it's just a tale of a single parent family in the Americas. Uh, presumably in the 50s. And what happens is, uh, there's, a, there's a brilliant moment in this song where, where it breaks down and the singer from the Juicy Fruit starts talking about um, the tragic tale that he wants to depict. Talking about how Eddie's baby sister, uh, the aforementioned baby sister, needed an operation. And in order for them to find the money, they had to become successful. And the only way they could think to do that was if he committed suicide and then like the memorial album would be successful and then his estate would pay for the operation for his sister. So basically he just sacrifices himself so that his sister might live. And they do that in this amazingly observed sort of um, nostalgic piece of rock and roll music. It's really, it's really awesome. Um, I have it on uh, my daughter's playlist. I listen to it all the time. It's just great. Little Eddie Mitty, born in Jersey City, started singing when he was five. Never knew his father and mother didn't bother to catch his last name fast as he came. Some wicked and rude. Wicked as because I'm from the 90s, 80s. Um, 
70s and rude in the sense that it's some rude bass playing check it out you'll love it then the second song is called faust now this is played in the movie by the character that's called winslow leach and he is the um he is the man that's sort of fated to become the the phantom of the paradise and the paradise is a um sort of nightclub rock and roll mecca building that um that paul williams's character is is launching because he's tired of all the other sort of uh, well, more or less every sort of musical endeavor that he's um taken part in has been super successful and he's looking for the new thing and, and so he decides to build this sort of uh, incredible musical venue called the paradise this is winslow leach trying to audition to be the person that um lo- provides the music to launch the paradise um it's just him at a piano singing a song which becomes well you hear another version of it later on which is sung by paul williams it's uh, it's basically the theme, I suppose, of the whole thing. All my dreams are lost. I can't sleep. Then, upholstery. Readers, man, that's what life is all about. So there's a guitar part in there that's like a. Which is the dictionary definition of an ostinato. Um, the chords roll around this thing, and, and then basically there's there's a guitar, which is probably a baritone guitar or something, playing that motif throughout. And the the backing vocal arrangement is so Beach Boys, you could almost imagine that Brian Wilson himself had arranged it. Everything on this soundtrack is just brilliantly executed. It really does sound authentic. Um, so that's the Beach Bums, which is the same vocalists as the Juicy Fruits who appear in you know, more or less every song on this uh, soundtrack. So as this um, audition process continues, Jessica Harper sings a song. She's, she's, called, a, she's called Phoenix in the, uh, in the movie, and she sings this one, Special to Me. This is the one, this is the song that shows uh, Paul Williams' um, sort of songwriting heritage. He, he also wrote songs for a lot of other people like... Um, David Bowie or Bowie, depending on your inclination. The Carpenters. There's no two ways to pronounce that, really. The Carpenters. Um, and you can really hear the, the sort of the Carpenters lineage in this song. Caught up in your wheel and dealing. You've got no time left for simple feeling. I thought I knew you, but I didn't know you at all. So I think she's addressing somebody who works too hard, basically, in the name of ambition. Told me several times. Tell me one time that you do 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 were well, working just to survive, but you're working so hard that you don't even know you're alive. And she has this, she has this live for a really slow Karen Carpenter um, vibrato technique. She's got a lovely voice actually, and a brilliant actress too. My favourite song on this whole soundtrack is the next one. It's the Phantoms theme. And I often listen to this song and I think, where would indeed Lionel Richie's Hello have um, sounded exactly the way it does were it not for Paul Williams' um, Phantom theme, Phantom's theme? Um, listen to that first chord on the piano. You know, it could be hello. Sleep, I hear a voice. Is it only in my mind? Now, Paul Williams, the way he enunciates um, words as he sings, it sort of sounds like he's singing around his tongue. Like, or is it someone called? Is it someone calling me? He got this sort of his tongue's there, right in the middle of his mouth. It's um, it's a it's a technique that I've only sort of um. I've only seen it once recently, and that's in Paolo Nutini. I feel I feel like Paolo Nutini's uh, singing style may have been influenced by Paul Williams. Um, have a listen to Phantom's theme when you get a chance, and and tell me if I'm wrong. I'm not. Calling me. 
Someone I failed. Someone I failed. <laughs> his, tongue, his tongue is there, right in the middle of his mouth. It's beautiful. Left behind. The lyric in this is amazing. To work it out, I let them in. All the good guys and the bad guys that I've been. All the demons that, was it the demons that disturbed me and the angels that defeated them somehow come together in me now. Isn't that wonderful? It's kind of like a Know Thyself song, really. He's trying to figure out what makes him tick, I guess. I suppose, I guess. I suppose, I guess. To work it out, I let them in. All the good guys and the bad guys, man. All the demons that disturbed me. I don't know how to do it. Disturbed me. And the angels that defeated them somehow. Come together in me now. Oh, I love Paul Williams' voice. Great singer and an awesome songwriter. That's, that's, a, that's a classic, that one is. A world classic. When you hear the songs on this album, you just wonder, why wasn't this uh, musical more successful? It's madness. It's the greatest musical ever made. Directed by Brian De Palma. You know who that is? He directed uh, Scarface and Carrie and probably a lot of other things as well. In order to antagonise further the Phantom, um, Paul Williams' character, um, whose name is Swan, um, elects to ignore uh, the Phantom's wishes and instead of using Jessica Harper or Phoenix as the singer, um, appoints this character called Beef, who's outrageously camp, but quite a powerful, you know, um, individual. With a really a robust singing style that sort of puts me in mind of a... Of a a middle-aged Tom Jones kind of guy. He's just he's he's pretty outrageous, and um, that's not the choice that the Phantom made. So this is this is um, the Undead, which is again it's the same singers that were in the Juicy Fruits and the Beach Bums singing a song to sort of introduce uh, beef, which will drive the Phantom insane. Sorry if all this is a bit confusing. It doesn't get any clearer when you watch the movie, which is probably one of the reasons why it wasn't the hit it deserved to be. But it's worth. It's worth trying to navigate your way through this confusing storyline because it is awesome. And then you get Ray Kennedy, who is Beef, singing um, Life at Last. Life at last. Life at last. Salutations from the other side. Salutations from the other side. He's just got a great voice. So you don't have some hope or you hate that we're part of you. Life at last. Salutations from the other side. I love people who sing like that. It takes it out of you, then. Right, and then there's a lovely, sort of, very sad love song sung by the Phoenix. And it has that sort of, um, what is that chord? So it's like a C minor, but it has the, um, the minor second, which is, um, well, it's a D. It's like this. But you have both the the minor third and the minor second in the same chord so it has this sort of sort of rings because it's it's just they're only a semitone apart but um, when you get the rest of the chord in it's hello again he loves that chord ah An old love, baby. So this song is called Old Souls. Our love, our love. The, her whole body is involved in that um, vibrato technique. Is an old love, baby. Is an old love, baby. You know, it's that thing when you have an eerie familiarity with a partner that can only be informed by. Something that occurred in a former life, I guess, is what he's talking about. Far be it for me to speculate, but... Uh, Our love is an old love, baby. It's great. This is the bit when um, the Phantom is tormented by the sight of Swan, played by Paul Williams, and um, Phoenix, played by Jessica Harper. 
uh, locked in a romantic, uh, intimate tryst as he watches through like a, a skylight window, weeping. All manner of supernatural occurrences happen after that when the true nature of the Paul Williams character is revealed. I won't say any more than that, okay? Promise. Then there's a reprise of the Faust song that we heard Winslow Leach uh, singing at the piano at the beginning of the um, movie. Um, now Paul Williams is singing it because I think um, the Phantom's voice has changed, you know, like the, the Winslow Leach is now the Phantom. And there was some sort of electronic trickery that uh, Paul Williams's character had to do to be able to get any sort of voice out of the Phantom, which is why they were looking for a singer anyway. Ordinarily, Winslow Leach would be, you know, belting these songs out. Um, but thankfully, that's not how it went down. Um, and Paul Williams sings Faust. Self last night. I was not myself last night. Couldn't. I was not myself last night. It's the it's Paolo Nutini singing style. It's brilliant. Um, so after that reprise of Faust, the last song on the album, and it's another classic, The Hell of It. And this is Paul Williams doing something that's a, sort of like a vaudevillian, jaunty piece of uh, sing-alongery, the likes of which uh, puts you in mind of the soundtrack to Bugsy Malone. You remember that musical? And uh, who wrote the songs on Bugsy Malone? It was Paul fucking Williams. This guy's a genius. There's a really good documentary about Paul Williams called um, Still Alive. Um, and it's basically a, a massive Paul Williams enthusiast that wonders what became of him after he sort of, I don't know, he, a lot of people thought he was, he'd passed away because um, his weight was fluctuating a lot. He was drinking a lot and saying really outrageous things on television. Then he just disappeared in the 80s. But he is still alive. He's still gigging. And I urge you to go and see a Paul Williams performance if you get a chance because this guy can really sing and the songs that he's written are fucking second to none. The guy's a genius. So this last song is the, the hell of it and it's sort of like a, just reminds me of the Bugsy Malone soundtrack. Jaunty, vaudevillian, good time. Good times with a slightly diabolical thematic uh, lyric. Roll on thunder, shine on lightning The days are long and the nights are frightening Nothing matters anywhere and that's the hell of it Yeah, it starts off with this sort of doomy, foreboding uh, guitar part and then once it kicks off, it's all like, I don't know, it's like a barn dance or something, but in... It's like a... No, it's more like the sort of music you might expect to hear in a speakeasy in Chicago. Around about 22. 21, 22. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, rundown of the soundtrack to The Phantom of the Paradise. I realise it's a slightly obscure record, but in my view, it, it is just full of brilliant songs. And um, if you do get a chance to watch The Phantom of the Paradise... I promise you, you're going to absolutely love it. The, the film itself is super saturated. It's really an assault for the eyes. It's got amazing songs in it, brilliant acting performances. And of course, the singing's amazing. Um, you'll enjoy this. And don't forget, it was directed by Brian De Palma. So you know it's good. Justin Hawkins writes again. Again. I forgot to mention, this film came out in 1974. 1974, that's even older than me. So, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, uh, watch one of these two videos, and uh, never be afraid to wear a large hat over the top of your over-ear headphones. It looks cool. Nice one.